fucking creepy, right? Did that scare you, by the way? It's a completely natural response, given how fucking creepy this scene is from the notoriously unsettling game series, Little Nightmares. But why did it frighten you? Nothing jumps out at you, and as the watcher, you aren't the character, so you've no primal survival instinct. Empathy for the character could be an explanation, but take away the character and the hand, just have the cage. It's still creepy and unsettling, and it isn't just your perception. This is terror and ambient horror, and it's special. video games a form of art? Sounds like an unrelated question, but just let me explain. As someone who grew up on video games watching their potential grow, I would consider video games art. And not just in the form of human expression where everything is art, I consider them high art on the same level as literature and film two mediums which I do enjoy profusely. Video games are just another method of consuming your media, just like watching a movie or reading a book. But that being said, they are still different forms, and the tools at the disposal of the artists creating these works in different mediums are different, and the manner in which they really get into your head and provoke a fear response, in the case of horror, are different. It's important to remember these differences. Drawing parallels from different horror mediums can be tricky, but they absolutely do exist. And this is why I started off asking if video games were high art. The horror genre requires a lot of psychological understanding to pull off correctly. What's interesting to me is how video games can both be the easiest to pull off, relying on the easy method to create a sense of danger with AI or some unsettling environment, but they can also be the hardest and most awe-striking. Games can have movies in their game, they can have books in their game, but you can't have a game in your movie or a movie in your book. And I don't just mean the act of watching or reading as a part of the gameplay experience, I mean the storytelling aspect, the foreboding text, the shot composition, the foreshadowing. Things that people associate with different types of media are applicable to video games, especially horror ones centered around a centralized storyline. Now I personally am in a bit of an odd boat making this video. I've experienced the horror genre in almost every method I can think of, but I've also created my own horror game. Well, I say that like I finished it. I don't have any footage of it, but the idea was for it to be a VR horror game that I made in Unity, where you explored an abandoned ship in the late 18th century nearing the end of the Age of Exploration. My girlfriend made all the models of the boat and the barrels and stuff, she's really talented at Blender, uh, and through a bit of tricky code I was able to get it so that you could look down to move forward and that was the main gameplay, that was how you interacted with your environment. The reason I don't have any footage of it is because I unfortunately left all my game assets, scripts, code, and models on my old computer. And the reason I did is because I kind of gave up halfway through and kind of forgot about it. But it taught me a lot about creating a creepy atmosphere. I would show my family my alpha version and although they said it spooked them, they weren't really struck with terror and horror the way I had hoped. Until I jump scared them. It might have been the context of the situation, but I can never know. I was just a 16 year old with Unity installed on my computer, and it taught me that horror and terror were different, and they are. There's been many videos created around the concept of horror, even created around the concept of horror games specifically. But I'm gonna try and stay away-ish from horror. I'm not talking about the jump scare my family got or the fucking maze game everyone's played. These are all primal instinct, whether it be for yourself or for the empathy of a character in a piece of fictional media. Instead, I'm going to try and talk about terror, the thing that creeped my family out, the thing that elevates these types of games to a form of high art. They linger for longer than a rush of adrenaline from a jump scare ever could. Looking down when swimming above a seemingly bottomless ocean, the feeling that there is something upstairs when you know you're home alone, swearing you didn't put that there, swearing your loved one is an imitation, or having the feeling that you're on a reality TV show. These are all terrifying, and most of them make you perceive some sort of threat in an environment. I've always loved this type of horror in my media, though I didn't always know it. I remember when I was little, as I'm sure many of you did, I snuck horror movies and books to sleepovers and whatnot. Something Wicked This Way Comes, The Conjuring, creepypastas like The Harbinger Experience, Slender The Eight Pages. These fucked me up. Look, I'm not making this video looking down at you, I'm just as much of a little bitch as the rest of you, probably even more so than you think, which is exactly what gives me the authority to talk about this in the first place. And when I think back to these moments when I was a child and was very scared, it wasn't the sudden appearance of a monster that scared me, it was the environment the characters were in and the actual creatures they encountered. The Uncanny Valley is a famous example of terror. It isn't horrifying, it doesn't always display an immediate threat to you or anything at all really, but it doesn't look 
great. It's often attributed to animatronics, and although I for sure agree these fall into the uncanny valley, there's more to it than that. Someone that's just a little too tall, or has slightly off proportions. Someone whose arms are just a little too long for their body, reaching a bit past their knees. Your mind doesn't know how to classify these beings or objects. They aren't a threat, but they aren't safe and familiar either. So your body reacts with this eerie feeling. It stuns your natural fight or flight response because it doesn't know whether to even enact that response in the first place. The uncanny valley is part of a larger human response, something we all know of, something you've known since you were very, very young, which is, of course, fear of the unknown. Darkness is scary. Sounds like something a child would say, or Vsauce would say, but we all have it, we just differ in how well we suppress that fear. But what about darkness in a familiar place, your own house at night? It still has to do with the unknown, how do you know there isn't a monster there even with our logical minds, but it also has to do with how uncanny it is that there's no light coming in through the windows, it's all familiar to you, you've seen it every day, but it's just a little different. Staying up until 2am, waking up in the middle of the night, even when you turn the lights on, it feels odd. Time to finally talk about some different games. PT is a creepy game, seriously, this game is fucking creepy, and it taps into your mind in the uncanny valley on so many levels. It plays into your brain's ability to recognize patterns, but messes with those senses by mildly changing things. The different things you encounter in the game, the jittery movements, it's all unnatural and weird. And jeez do I wish this game came out. <laughs> I've already mentioned it, but Little Nightmares is terrifying. The environments you're put into use objects seen in our real world, but they're grossly out of proportion. Nothing's right, it's all creepy and strange, nothing belongs in our universe. They imply the existence of a larger, possibly hostile threat. And that is the difference between the Uncanny Valley and the games I'm going to mention. They have an obvious threat while still maintaining that warped and skewed familiarity, stacking terror on top of a threat. Let me ask you, which is scarier to you, a man pointing a gun at you, or an 8 foot tall man with no face watching you through your window holding a gun? Little Nightmares shares its creepy quality with another ambient horror game, Inside. Inside is an incredible game, it's another game that uses terror instead of outright horror. The scariness is from the situations you're put into, the world and the lore, which rest assured is absolutely magnificent, and I'm not just saying that because totalitarian dystopia is one of my favorite genres, it genuinely is an incredible game and an incredible expanded universe. Speaking of expanded universes, you guys like SCP, Secure, Contain, Protect? The SCP Foundation is infamous for how frightening it is. And SCP Containment Breach, a game spawned from said foundation, is, who would have guessed, pretty fucking creepy. But unlike other games that are scary because they withhold information from you, SCP Containment Breach is scary because it withholds nothing about the monsters. It's the terrifying truth that scares you, in fact you're almost supposed to go into the game with background knowledge of all the SCPs. SCP Containment Breach is fun. In it you collect and receive various pamphlets that quite literally explain everything there is to know about what you're going up against if you don't know already, but instead of empowering the player with knowledge, they belittle you with it. The knowledge that you can't look away or blink, the knowledge that there's an entity on its way to kill you at any given moment just slowly, the knowledge that the voices you're hearing aren't coming from any human. Heard of SCP-096? It's an SCP that, if shown a picture of its face, will hunt you down and tear you apart. I'm glad you know that because I'm now going to show you a picture of his face. Without the context of what SCP-096 is, and the knowledge that he is now coming for you watching this video sitting in your bed, well then this is just a disturbing video. But with the context, it becomes so much more sinister and malicious. The final station is on its own a very beautiful game. It's filled to the brim with these gorgeous, scenic views contrasting with the brutality of the gameplay. And as you play through the game, you piece together the truth. Your brain goes on and on with the aid of the visual storytelling. In the final station, there's a section of the game revolving around the Guardian. The Guardian is a colossal robot that is supposed to save humanity from the second visitation. The sheer size alone is enough to strike awe and fear in the player. Megalophobia is described as the fear of big things. It's a type of terror, unlike horror or fear of blatant threats like a gun, and whenever I see it in video games they always without fail make me quiver. Shadow of the Colossus isn't a very scary game. It's a good game, don't get me wrong, but I don't think anyone would classify it as a horror game. Despite that, some of the most scared I've ever felt is watching these big ass monsters just walking around and existing. Another thing that Shadow of the Colossus does well is its soundtrack. 
Speaking of that, you know what's a good way of demonstrating the difference between horror and terror? Well, if you're smarter than a fucking tea kettle, you should know what I'm about to talk about. Uh, music in games has always been important. Soundtracks have existed for as far back as most gamers can remember, as far back as I can remember anyway. In horror video games, there are a few types. Uh, methodic songs, the songs that don't fit into the next two categories anyway. They're usually contextually fitting, but they still are conventionally pleasant to the ear. You enjoy hearing these ones. Horrifying, these are the action-filled songs with the high notes and usually try and instill a feeling of importance on what's going on currently. And lastly, terrifying, music that's eerie and creepy, yet ambient and slow. This is the personification of these terms if you by now still haven't distinguished them from one another. Now listen, I'm not a fucking musician, alright? I know these aren't very professional, it's just the way I like to sort them. But despite not being a musician, I can speak on how these impact your mood. Not that I even need to, since if you're watching this video, it's likely you already understand the feeling these types of horror genre songs give you. And if you can't tell, my favorite is the terror type, since it really taps into your mind. The creepy ambient type. Anyway, time to talk about gameplay. The things I mentioned so far, the ambient horror of Inside or the uncanniness of Megalophobia, the horror and myths of the SCP Foundation, even the score and soundtracks are things that could be translated into books and movies and other mediums. Five Nights at Freddy's is a game that's universally praised for its lore and depth, and universally hated for its fandom. But the reason it created such a spark was how intense, yes I said intense, the gameplay is. Unlike lots of horror games, you're not forced to do something scary to get out of a bad situation or kill a monster because the main protagonist has some motive. You're just supposed to sit there. The jump scares are of course a product of horror, they're an adrenaline rush, but they're still a very small part of the game. Except in the third one where they're overused but just ignore that. You're sitting there in this creepy environment with unsettling uncanny valley type animatronics on their way to do, well, you don't know. Even after you die, you don't know what they do. In Five Nights at Freddy's, you are alone, isolated, and that's important when trying to convey the feeling of terror and vulnerability in video games. People are social beings, we're empowered by the presence of others. You can't truly feel alone with film or literature. PB. Hey, I was watching that. The characters can and you can emphasize with their situation, but it isn't you. Isolation is interesting because it isn't just the absence of people or life. In Inside, you come across other people, but they're in a state of mind unaccessible to you, leaving you feeling even more alone than before you met them. Silent Hill 2 is a great example of this. Demonstrated by YouTuber Foxcade, the humans you meet and converse with don't feel right. Their interactions leave you feeling more alone because they make you feel as though you're the only sane person left in the city, or town, or village, or whatever. This is an incredible act of storytelling, and it's one of the reasons Silent Hill is so creepy and unsettling. You feel so desperately alone despite all the interactions with other human beings you have. Silent Hill 2 also features great gameplay. It makes sure that you, as the player, feel as ordinary as any other human being. While delving into the Falmar ruins in Skyrim is scary, and the monsters you encounter being unnatural and uncanny, you have the luxury of being the Dragonborn. To really invoke that feeling of terror, the player cannot be too strong and needs to actually fear the monster. An important part of the gameplay is how the player interacts with the threats. These can be as simple as running away or fighting, but they can also be very intricate involving sight like in Slender the Eight Pages or SCP-173 and Containment Breach. I've always loved these because they're so simple and intuitive to video games, using the very ability to look around in the first person three dimensional space as a gameplay mechanic. But enough about that since now we're getting into the territory of actual horror. The reason I'm comfortable talking about these in the first place is because although it's true they're horrifying, there's a present threat to your character, a lot of what I've discussed is also about terror. I remember going to Slenderman, the eight pages, for the first time off the recommendation of some of my supposed friends that were all huddled around me. At that point, I had no idea what Slenderman was, didn't know at all what I was getting into. When I first saw the Slenderman, I wasn't sure how even to react. It took me until my friends started cowering behind the chair I was sitting on to realize that this was the threat, this was the creature. And only after that point did the game truly become a horror game to me. Anyway, that's it. That's enough talk about the interaction with the monsters, now interaction with the environment, or in other words, just the fundamental gameplay. The manner in which you control your player and traverse, or in some cases sit still in the environment you're in. 
There are many different methods of this, common ones like 2D platforming, top-down, first-person, third-person, VR first-person, and also more niche ones like Five Nights at Freddy's, which I can really only describe as a resource management action game, or the simple act of playing a game of checkers. Needless to say, there are tons of interesting gameplay options for aspiring devs looking to tap into the horror genre. Visual clarity and field of view are a great way to limit the player and make them feel more vulnerable. Visual clarity defines a lot about how you interact with your environment, and it's also very common to see in these types of games. Silent Hill uses fog, Subnautica uses ocean dust, and most common of all, darkness. Flashlights have gained an almost eerie feeling to me all on their own, interestingly enough. The only places I find myself using them in are dark places that have no alternative light source, and I'm not comfortable enough with it, hence the requirement of the flashlight. But whatever, having a light source is good anyway, but my brain has still attributed them to horror and so now they give me the creeps. These horror games use flashlights a lot, and rightfully so, they're a great way of limiting vision while still letting you actually see. But terror can be made in pitch darkness too. An example of this is Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. There's a section where you have to walk through a pitch dark area with a dancing animatronic. You use audio cues to get through the section, and although it exists within blackness with no light source, it's still so foreboding and creepy. And it's a testament to just how different these horror games can be while still remaining scary. How visual clarity can be used and flipped around, it's all interesting and different. Anyway, sorry to abruptly end the video, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about, so I'll be off now as well. With my final words being, what's that looking in from your window? <laughs>